ഓം നമോ ഭഗവതെ വാസുദേവായ ശ്രീകൃഷ്ണായ പരമാത്മനേ നമഹ ശ്രീമദ് ഭഗവത്ഗീത ചാപ്റ്റർ ഫോർ ജ്ഞാനയോഗ ശ്രീ ഭഗവാൻ സെഡ് ഐ റിവീൽഡ് ദിസ് ഇമാർട്ടൽ യോഗ ടു വിവസ്വാൻ ദി സൺ ഗാഡ് വിവസ്വാൻ കൺവേഡ് ഇറ്റ് ടു മനു ഹി സൺ and manu imparted it to his son ishwaku thus transmitted in succession from father to son arjuna this yoga remained known to the rajarishis through long lapse of time this yoga has got lost to the world the same ancient yoga which is a supreme secret has this day been imparted to you by me because you are my devotee and friend arjuna said you are of recent origin while the birth of vivaswan dates back to remote antiquity how then am i to believe that you imparted this yoga at the beginning of the creation shri bhagavan said Arjuna you and I have passed through many births I remember them all you do not remember ho oh, chester of fools though birthless and immortal and the lord of all beings i manifest myself through my own yoga maya keeping my nature under control Arjuna whenever righteousness is on the decline unrighteousness is in the ascendant then i body myself forth for the protection of the virtuous for the extirpation of evil doers and for establishing dharma on a firm footing i am born from age to age arjuna my birth and activities are divine he who knows this in reality is not reborn on leaving his body but comes to me completely rid of attachment fear and anger wholly absorbed in me depending on me and purified by the penance of wisdom many have become one with me even in the past Arjuna however men seek me even so do i approach them for all men follow my path in every way in this world of human beings men seeking the fruition of their activities worship the gods for success born of actions follows quickly the four orders of society namely brahmana the kshatriya the vaisya and sudra were created by me classifying them according to the gunas predominant in each and apportioning corresponding duties to them though the originator of this creation know me the immortal lord to be a non doer since i have no craving for the fruit of actions actions do not contaminate me even he who thus knows me in reality is not bound by actions having known thus action was performed even by the ancient seekers for liberation therefore do you also perform actions as have been performed by the ancients from antiquity what is action and what is inaction even men of intelligence are puzzled over this question therefore i shall expound to you the truth about action knowing which will you be freed from its evil effects that is the binding nature the truth about action must be known and the truth of inaction also must be known even so the truth about prohibited action must be known for mysterious or the ways of action he 
who sees inaction in action and action in inaction is wise among men he is a yogi he who performed all actions even the wise call him a sage whose undertakings are all free from desire and thoughts of the world and whose actions are burnt up by the fire of wisdom he who having totally given up attachment to actions and their fruit no longer depends on the world and is ever content does nothing at all though fully engaged in action having subdued his mind and body and given up all objects of enjoyment and free from craving he who performs sheer bodily action does not incur sin the karma yogi who is contented with whatever is got unsought is free from jealousy and has transcended all pairs of opposites like joy and grief and is balanced in success and failure is not bound by his action all his actions get dissolved entirely who is free from attachment and has no identification and no sense of mind with the body whose mind is established in the knowledge of self and who works merely for the sake of sacrifice in the practice of seeing brahma everywhere as a form of sacrifice brahma is the ladle with which the oblation is poured into the fire brahma again is the oblation brahma is the fire brahma itself is the sacrificer and so brahma itself constitutes the act of pouring the oblation into the fire and finally brahma is the goal to be reached by him who is absorbed in brahma as the act of such sacrifice other yogis duly offer sacrifice only in the shape of worship to gods others pour into the fire of brahma the very sacrifice in the shape of the self through the sacrifice known as the perception of identity others offer as sacrifice their senses of hearing etc into the fires of self discipline other yogis again offer sound and other objects of perception into the fires of the senses others sacrifice all the functions of their senses and the functions of the vital airs into the fire of yoga in the shape of self control kindled by wisdom some perform sacrifice with material possessions some offer sacrifice in the shape of austerities others sacrifice through the practice of yoga while some striving souls observing austere vows perform sacrifice in the shape of wisdom through the study of sacred texts other yogis offer the act of exhalation into that of inhalation even so others the act of inhalation into that of exhalation there are still others given to the practice of pranayama who having regulated their diet and controlled the process of exhalation and inhalation both pour their vital airs into the vital airs themselves all these have their sins consumed away by sacrifice and understand the meaning of sacrificial worship arjuna yogis who enjoy the nectar that has been left over after the performance of a sacrifice attain the eternal brahma to the man who does not offer sacrifice even the world is not happy how then can the other world be happy many such forms of sacrifice have been set forth in detail in the vedas know them all as involving the action of mind senses and body thus knowing the truth about them you shall be freed from the bondage of action through their performance arjuna sacrifice through knowledge is superior to sacrifice performed with material things for all actions without exception culminate in knowledge o son of kunti understand the 
true nature of that knowledge by approaching illumined soul if you prostrate at their feet render them service and question them with an open and guileless heart those wise seers of truth will instruct you in that knowledge arjuna when you have achieved enlightenment ignorance will delude you no more in the light of that knowledge you will see the entire creation first within your own self and then in me even though you were the most sinful of all sinners this knowledge alone would carry you like a raft across all your sins for as the blazing fire turns the fuel to ashes arjuna even so the fire of knowledge turns all actions to ashes on earth there is no purifier as great as knowledge he who has attained purity of heart through prolonged practice of karma yoga automatically sees the light of truth in the self in course of time he who has mastered his senses is exclusively devoted to his practice and is full of faith attains jnana having had the revelation of truth he immediately attains supreme peace in the form of god realization he who lacks discrimination is devoid of faith and is at the same time possessed by doubt is lost to the spiritual path for the doubting soul there is neither this world nor the world beyond nor even happiness arjuna actions do not bind him who has dedicated all his actions to god according to the spirit of karma yoga whose doubts have been dispelled by wisdom and is self possessed therefore arjuna slashing to pieces with this word of wisdom this doubt in your heart born of ignorance establish yourself in karma yoga in the shape of even mindedness and stand up for the fight thus in the upanishad sung by the lord the science of brahma the scripture of yoga the dialogue between sri krishna and arjuna ends the fourth chapter entitled the yoga of knowledge as well as the disciplines of action and knowledge the glories of chapter 4 of the bhagavad gita from the padma purana lord vishnu said my dear lakshmi now i will describe the glories of the fourth chapter of the shrimad bhagavad gita on the bank of the river ganges there is a town of the name kashi where at the temple of vishwanath a great saint of the name bharata lived daily with the greatest devotion he would recite the fourth chapter of shrimad bhagavad gita previously when bharat had been traveling on pilgrimage he had gone to the town of tapodhan to take darshan of the deity of lord krishna there while leaving the town he saw two bare fruit trees deciding to take rest under the shade of those trees he lay down using the root of one of the trees as a pillow and a root of the other to rest his feet upon after some time when bharat left from that place those two trees started to dry up within 5 or 6 days both trees completely dried up and died these two st- souls who had been living in those trees took their next birth as the daughters of a very pious brahmana once when those girls had reached the age of 7 years they had gone on pilgrimage to kashi while wandering in kashi they happened to see the great sage bharata when they saw bharata maharaja they immediately went and fell at his feet and in sweet words said o bharata maharaja 
due to your mercy we both became freed from the tree form of life when bharat maharaja heard this statement he became surprised he inquired from them my dear daughters where and when did i come in contact with you and free you from the form of trees also kindly inform me how you attained the form of the trees in the first place because i do not know anything of this matter thereafter those two girls first informed bharat maharaja the reason for their attaining the form of the trees the two girls said maharaja on the bank of the river godavari there is a sacred place of the name chinna pap at that place there was a rishi of the name sachatapa he was performing very great and difficult austerities in the hot season he would sit in the between many fires and in the cold season he would stand in the cold river in the course of time he became completely pure and had complete control of his senses and slowly he attained the lotus feet of the supreme personality lord brahma started visiting daily to take the darshan of sachatapa and put questions before him about devotional service to the lord lord indra meanwhile was becoming very worried seeing the elevated position of sachatapa thinking that he might one day assert his own position as king of heaven at that time lord indra called the two of us who in that birth were apsaras in the heavenly kingdom and i instructed as to go and cause the fall down of sachatapa before he tries to assert me from my position after receiving lord indra's command we leapt from his presence and went to the bank of godavari river where sachatapa was performing austerities at that place we both started to sing and dance very provocatively close to sachatapa with the intention of causing that sage to engage in a sexual relationship with us while dancing our covering cloth slipped down and our breasts became visible at that time taking water in his hand that sage cursed us in the following words you both go and become bell trees on the bank of river ganga upon hearing his curse we both fell at his feet and begged his forgiveness my dear sage please forgive us for we are simply the servants of lord indra seeing our submissive attitude that sage became pleased and informed us that we would remain as trees until maharaja bharata came in contact with us and he also blessed us that we would be able to remember our previous births my dear maharaja bharata at at the time when you visited tapodhan you rested beneath us when we were in the form of bell trees you were reciting the fourth chapter of shrimad bhagavad gita and by hearing that recitation we were not only free of the tree form and also obtained birth in a devotee family also we lost all desires for enjoying in this material world lord vishnu said my dear lakshmi when those two girls recited their history before bharat maharaja he became very happy and left for his ashram those two girls throughout their life carefully recited the fourth chapter of shrimad bhagavad gita daily and attained devotion to my lotus feet this concludes shrimad bhagavad gita fourth chapter shri krishna 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 krishna, krishna.